everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you for joining me. Now today I'm doing a product review on the Tim Holtz stamp platform. I purchased this little, maybe about a week and a half ago maybe and so I thought I'd um, use quite a few different products with this platform to let you guys know what I think about it and um, how this actually performs with certain products. Now the products that um, I'm going to be using today, I thought I'd do one of my rubber stamps. I wanted to check out see how it worked with that. Um, and then also a clear cling stamp. So I'm going to be using this stamp set. And then also I have this, this is a background stamp and it, it's fairly large. It's about five and a half inches by five and a half inch squared. And so I thought I'd try, try this out in the stamp press, see how that works. And then also um, just regular cardstock. Um, and then I thought maybe I should use some textured watercolor cardstock and see how that works in the stamp platform. Um, we'll put that to the test. <laughs> and then also, um, this is actually textured cardstock with a little bit of shimmer, and I thought I'd try that one out as well. So we're going to use all these products today, and I'm going to make um, actually two cards with them using. Um, the stamp platform. Now um, we're going to just jump in and get started with our first card. Now for our first card, um, well let me tell you a little bit about the machine. Now it has the clear plate on top that you can pull out and it's very actually very sturdy and very heavy and I really like it. Um, there's two sides, one for a clear stamp, one for a rubber stamp. Um, the clear stamp side is smooth and then the rubber stamp side has a little bit of texture on it but it just snaps back in place and it um, folds open and closed nicely which I really like. It comes with two magnets that are um, that stick to the base well and I really like that. I already covered them with washi tape and then um, what I like about this is if you're into scrapbooking um, I have a 12 by 12 here piece of pattern paper. The nice thing is the sides on this are open and so your paper will fit nice and flush against the plate and I really like that about this this platform. So this is great for scrapbookers not just card makers. <laughs> okay now what I also like about it is it has um, it has the rulers on the bottom and on the side but what I did here is in my computer I just print it, uh, print it up some grid line sheets of paper and then I laminated it. Um, sometimes I like to line up my images on um, grid paper so this worked out perfect. I did the same thing for my MISTI. So I just cut out three different sizes. Um, so that's handy little little tip for um, for any stamp press. But um, we're going to jump in and get started. First off I'm taking a piece of white cardstock. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here and I am going to be using my grid paper. What I'm planning on doing, I want to take some temporary adhesive and just glue my my grid mat down so it doesn't shift. I'm going to use my magnets for my cardstock so I thought this would help. And it, it glues, it sticks really well which is nice. I'm going to start off using the clear cleaning stamp. These are um, by Newton's Nook a stamp set. It's adorable. It is called uh, Love and Chocolate. And so I'm taking the sentiment that says um, makes everything better and I'm lining it up and I'm just going to close the lid. And when I line up my cardstock, I want to make sure that it's lined up with that one of my grid lines on top. So it picks up really well and I really like that. I'm going to go in with some worn lipstick Distress Oxide ink and I'm just going to stamp that sentiment one time. And then I'm going to move my my um, cardstock up two squares and I'm going to just repeat every two squares and it's I'm, I'm finding that I don't have to stamp twice which is so nice and I love the fact that you don't run out of room so that is a positive and I really really like this okay I have all my pink ones done I'm going to wipe off my stamp really well and then I'm going to go in with some distress oxide ink and this time vintage photo now I'm just going to move my, um, well you can tell I move my, my card base 
down and now I moved it up to and then I'm just stamping the same I'm just repeating the same stamp I'm gonna ink it up again and then stamp my sentiment again so this is gonna make um, alternate colors and I thought that would be really fun for this card and um, I really I'm impressed with the room that I have now I am um, I've, I've wanted a bigger stamp press for a while um, but I couldn't break down and get the the larger misty just because the price price point is a little bit high it's great it's a great product too but it's just a little high on the price point so um, this one's a lot more economical but um, so far I'm really liking it okay next um, in the stamp set too there's two little chocolate truffle candies so I'm just gonna um, ink them up with my Versamark ink and I'm gonna double stamp make sure I get a real good Im uh, impression and then I have some hot chocolate Nouveau embossing powder I am gonna use that embossing powder over my truffles here and then I'm just gonna go ahead and heat set those and I um, no problems with the images at all I really I'm really liking this I'm just gonna clean off my stamps and then now what I'm gonna do is take a piece of this um, it's like a shimmery textured cardstock I'm gonna stamp the word chocolate it's just gonna place that in the bottom there and what I what I noticed too is the magnets are actually holding my paper down I don't know if it's because of my um, my laminated piece and my misty, but every time I close it and lift it, it comes up. <laughs> so that's a, this is a good thing. So I stamped the word chocolate, and I'm going to use that same hot chocolate embossing powder, and I just went ahead and heat set that and trimmed it down. So that's going to go with our sentiment as well. Now um, I have a die. This is a die from Lawn Fawn. It's a um, um, let me see. It is a, actually this is not Lawn Fawn. Oh, this is from my favorite things. It's a mini scallop rectangle die. So I cut out my panel with that. And then now we're going to color in our little truffles. Now I want to keep this card really basic and simple. So all I did was, um, I stamped my oxide inks on an acrylic block and then using my water pan, I'm just going to color in my truffles, just alternating the tops and the bottoms with the colors very simple and easy but I like the um, I actually really like the chalkiness that the oxide inks give when you color it <laughs> so there's my truffles I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna fussy cut those out and then I'm going in with my Nouveau deluxe adhesive and I'm adding a little little drops of glue here and there I need some shimmer on these little truffles so I'm taking some chunky glitter and then I'm adding them to the top parts of my truffle. I'm just going to shake off the excess and I'm going to set those aside to dry and I think that adds a nice little shine and sparkle to those little candies there. I'm going to take this panel and I'm going to use my glue runner and then glue it to another panel I cut out that's just slightly larger using that pink um, textured cardstock there. The same cardstock that I use for my sentiment. I just fishtailed the end of my sentiment and then I'm going to pop that up along with those truffles and stick it on my card panel here. And I think that this looks so sweet. And just for a little bit added extra, I'm taking some um, brown and white Baker's Shrine and I'm going to tie a bow. And I'm just going to use a glue dot and secure that right next to the chocolate. This card was um, very simple and easy, but I just wanted to show you how this this um, platform works. I'm just going to flip this over and add some foam tape. Lift that up and place it right in the center of a standard size A2 card base. And that's it. That's my card, my first card. Um, well, I guess that's not it. <laughs> of course, I, I need a little bit more shimmer. I always have to add a little bit more. So I'm grabbing some itty bitty clear sequins and I'm just adding a few here and there. And then now my card is finished. <laughs>
here's a close-up of what it looks like. But it's so sweet and fun. And I'm, I'm impressed with this platform, I really am. Okay, now, for my next card, I want to use this extra large background stamp. Now, I haven't been able to use this um, in my Mini Misty because of the size. And this is probably one of the reasons, too, why I wanted a larger one. So I'm going to just try this out inside my um, my platform here. This actually is a, a Chevron print, and I think it's from Heidi Swap. I'm not quite sure. If I can remember, I'll leave the link below. But I'm just going to place it in the corner there. And you can see when I lifted it up, it took up my, my grid paper. So I'm just going to remove that temporary adhesive and then take that out. <laughs> we don't need that. Um, for this one, I'm using a piece of a watercolor paper. So it's thicker and I'm using the textured side. I'm going to start off with the worn lipstick and I'm going to go over the top part of the stamp. And then for the middle part, I'm going to be using some iced spruce. It's a real pretty gray. And then for the bottom, I'm going in with Vintage Photo. And all of these, again, are um, Distress Oxide inks. So I have three different colors. Now I want to do something different. So I'm going to spray the stamp with my water bottle. And then I'm going to close it up. And I just wanted to see what it would do. And it turned out beautiful. I really like the way it turned out. There's a little spot um, in the center of my panel that's a little bit um, not as vivid, but I wasn't worried too worried about that because I'm going to be covering up the center. But I think the outcome is just gorgeous. I really love the way this looks. So I'm going to set that aside to let that dry, and then I'm going to clean up my mess here. I wanted to show you how easy this wipes off. So I just have a little shimmy. Um, I got it at the dollar store, um, and I'm just cleaning up the platform, and it just wipes off like smooth as silk. Just lovely. Love the way, love the cleanup on this. And I used a lot of water too, so and it cleaned up really nice. Now for my next card, I wanted to use a rubber stamp. I wanted to check out how this works. So again, I'm going to use some watercolor paper. And I'm taking, um, this is an itty bitty stamp set from, if I can remember the name of it. Let me see. But here I'm just flipping over the stamp press and putting it on the rubber side. And I'm just going to press it down and lift it up. This stamp is from Unity, it's a, and it's probably a pretty old one. Oldie but goodie. I'm going to go in with my Versamark ink, and then I'm going to press down here. And I did notice that it doesn't close all the way. But that's okay. I think the impression was really nice. I'm just going to go over it again just to double check. Sometimes with Versamark I go double because um, you can't see very well. But I did notice with the rubber stamps it doesn't close all the way. I'm going to, since I had this on my desk, this is the same hot chocolate embossing powder. I just went ahead and heat set that. Next I'm going to try out some vellum. So I'm going to take my image and place that in the middle and then place the sentiments on the top and the bottom. The top sentiment says hip hip hooray and then the bottom one says happy birthday. I'm just going to close the lid of this, pick it up, and then remove my um, centerpiece here. And then again I'm going to go in with my Versamark ink. I'm going to ink that up. I can't forget my anti-static powder tool, which I was surprised I didn't. <laughs> is Okay, and I just stamped this once and I think it worked out great. And I'm going in again with the same embossing powder. And I went ahead and heat set that. Okay, now I'm going to take a rectangle die and I'm just going to cut out a panel of this vellum. And then we're going to just set that aside. I think this is just about dry. There's a few bits and pieces but I really love the outcome of this. I'm just going to use my heat tool and finish finish off the drying process here. <laughs> I'm going to take a larger rectangle die and I'm just going to cut out my panel. Okay, so 
So we're just going to set those aside for now, and we're going to color in our little hippo. Now, um, for the hippo, I'm going to do the exact same thing with the oxide inks. They were already on the block, and so I thought I'd just use those. I'm just adding some ice spruce to my block. And then I'm just going to color the hippo in with the ice spruce. And I am using my water pen. Very easy to do. And then, um, you can't really tell, but I did add little rosy cheeks to the hippo. <laughs> And then after I got the hippo colored in, I'm going to go in with the worn lipstick and color in the present. And then I'm going to go in for the hippo's britches. I'm going to go in with the vintage photo. And I did add a little bit of worn lipstick to the sides of the britches. <laughs> okay. Or I guess they're overalls. <laughs> Okay, I have my little image done. And he look or she looks adorable. He or she, I'm not sure if it's a boy or a girl. Boy. <laughs> I'm thinking it's a little girl. Okay. I just gonna glue my background panel on my card base. And then I'm gonna pop up the hippo with some fun, uh, foam tape. And then I'm going to remove the backing, and I'm going to place the hippo right in the center of the vellum. I really wanted my background to stand out, so I thought the vellum would work out perfectly. Put him in the center, or her in the center, and I flipped her over, and then I'm going to add some more um, foam tape to the back. And then I'm just going to place this panel right in the center. and I'm gonna call that card done. Very simple, very easy, but I just wanted to show you guys the different um, elements that you um, that you can use with this card. And I guess I'm not done. <laughs> I always have to add a little bit more, but I did take my white gel pen and I'm adding polka dots to the present. Little white polka dots. And then, and then we're gonna call this card done. Very simple and easy, but very cute. And I really like that background. So those are the two cards that I made using the Tim Holtz uh, Tonic Studios st uh, stamp platform. And I have to say that um, it worked well with the Clear Cling stamp. It worked awesome with the large background stamp. With the rubber stamps, it worked just as well. And all different kind of card stocks. I was very impressed with this stamp the stamp platform and I'm so happy that I got it. Now Scrapping for Less has these at a great price guys. Um, I looked all around and Scrapping for Less's prices were the cheapest. So you might want to check them out. They are in stock and available right now. So if you're looking for a larger stamp platform or a beginning stamp platform this would be perfect. Thank you so much for stopping by guys. I wish you a great rest of the weekend and we'll see you again soon. Bye bye.